Everybody's already started their day. Already. You've already started your day. We'll start this meeting by holding before you something of consideration. You know, there's a lot of building going on in Joplin at this time. We'd expect this to be the case. And uh, you just drive through town, you can see a lot of construction, a lot of building. And as I was driving through the town this week, I noticed that uh, many of the homes that are being rebuilt and constructed are being, uh, they've been built on the same foundations, okay? And uh, they've been able to re reestablish their home on the existing foundation. And what has happened in this case is that storms came through the town and it removed the upper structures, mm -hmm. but the foundation was still, ex was still intact. Yeah. And the foundation was still there so the contractor builder could come along and he could attach the walls to the foundation, you see, and he could just erect the walls and, and come right up on with the building. So uh, you could say that even, the, even though the storm came through and, and just destroyed all the homes, uh, not everything was lost yeah. in this case because the foundation was still there, you see. Uh, at the very least, the foundation should surpass uh, or, or outdo the, the upper structure, the building. Okay. Uh, God has a foundation for us this morning, brethren, and I wanted to, I wanted to call your attention to this foundation that God has provided for us. Uh, and, and this foundation that God has given us, it reflects the greatness and it reflects the massive work that God is doing in, in his construction and his, his building project. He is hand-picked, and this foundation is exclusive. It's a unique foundation. It's beloved of the Father. I, re, I was reminded of Isaiah uh, 28, 16. Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste, shall not be ashamed. Of course, God's always thinking in eternity and his purposes. And he wants God's people to be uh, in the consideration of things, to always be thinking in terms of eternity as well. So, and God does everything with eternity in mind. So Jesus is an everlasting foundation, brethren. I bring before you an everlasting foundation. Amen. And uh, for no other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Christ Jesus. There are not two foundations. The body of Christ is not divided among itself, for it's built on one foundation, one foundation, one structure. It speaks of unity uh -huh. and oneness. He is the one rock of eternal salvation, the one foundation. We don't need to. Jesus is more than capable. Yes, Jesus yes. is more than what's needed. He's more than what's required. We've got one foundation. And so what does it mean then when we say that Jesus is our foundation, that the church is built upon the foundation of Jesus Christ? Well, it means one thing, brethren. It means that Jesus is our foundation. It means that the gates of hell should not prevail against her. Okay? That's what it means this morning. So you can think that, that at the very least, the gates of hell shall not prevail against her because we're built on the foundation of Jesus Christ. It means that nothing can stop what God is doing. It means we're absolutely safe in Jesus Christ and secure in him. So it's like the song says we sing a lot of times, and I think about this. In Christ I can be bold. I've been anchored that shall hold. Blow your wildest then, O gale. By his grace I shall not fail. So Jesus is the foundation of our strength. You see, we, we get it from him. Jesus, our foundation, is just like all foundations. He was set there first. Jesus was set in place first. Just like all other foundations were, he, that's a unique perspective of a foundation. He was put in place first. And for this reason, Jesus was appointed first. He was foreordained, foreordained before the world created. to be the foundation. Jesus was chosen first. He is God's elect, you see. The Father says, mine elect, in whom my soul delighteth. And Jesus said, for thou hast loved me before the world began John 17 and we are chosen in him brethren Amen. and we are dependent on this one it's the way it's supposed to be in Jesus Christ we are also God's elect the one in whom God delighteth mm -hmm. Jesus now he's the everlasting foundation chosen of God and those who are added to this foundation they're also chosen of God you see mm -hmm. he is the living foundation and he gives life to all who come to him to whom coming 
as unto a living stone, rejected indeed of men, uh -huh. but chosen of God and precious. Ye also, as living, lively stones, are built up a spiritual house uh -huh. and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifice acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Paul says, also in Ephesians, in whom all the building fittily framed together groweth unto a body, uh, unto a holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are built together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. That's a lot there. Amen. Our foundation is an everlasting foundation, a living foundation, elect of God, which makes the church of God also elect. Mm -hmm. So everything you see, again, is what God, uh, it's about what God is choosing yeah. and what God is selecting. Another consideration in this view of this foundation I want to bring before you this morning, very good, is that Jesus is also the cornerstone of the, this foundation. And this is very important. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and their prophets. Jesus himself being the chief cornerstone. Think about that this morning, brethren. The cornerstone does something different from the foundation. Although they work, they both work together, they're the same end. They do two different things. Actually, the cornerstone is the first connection between the foundation and what will be built upon it. You see, so Jesus makes that foundation, uh, makes that connection between the foundation and the upper structure himself. He, uh, the cornerstone sets the perfect square yeah. angle. It's a perfect square angle for all the walls, you see. Uh, according to the uh, cornerstone, the structure will have four equal sides, straight walls, and all the right angles will be square. In other words, the shape of the building, I consider this, the shape of the building will come from the cornerstone, yeah. won't it? A perfect cornerstone, then a perfect building. As the structure continues to follow its the line upward, uh, in the end, we have a, we have a building that's fashioned, uh, determined by both the foundation and the cornerstone. It's a marvelous picture to see. God is building his church piece by piece. The scriptures say stone by stone. And, we, and each one of the members are, are being sculpted individually uh, after the image of Christ and is set up next to the cornerstone and, and erect the building. In the final end, no one will be added to the building of God who does not bear the resemblance of the likeness of the cornerstone. Amen. That's right. Now, God has not contracted this work out to someone else. Right. He's Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He is overseeing this project and the, because this is going to be a dwelling place of God, you see. And uh, the scriptures say, And behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. Mm -hmm. Now, in the close of the scriptures, and as I was reading the very last couple of chapters, it, 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 it dawned on me that, you know, this, this book, Revelation, closes in a very fitting way. Mm -hmm. And John is given to see the end result of this, of this building project. Amen. And he gets a pretty good look yeah. at the church and its glory. Um, you know, actually, except for some very uh, few exhortations at the end of the book, the last couple of chapters is devoted to this final look at what God is doing. Amen. Uh, and I, John, saw, and I'm going to read just a few verses for you, and we'll close with this. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And just a few verses down, uh, he picks up again because the angel, she takes him to a higher place, and he gets a better gets a better view, gets a, a better vantage point. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God. And her light was likened to a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. That's quite a description for us to ponder. Uh, under the guidance of the spirit of uh, uh, the Apostle John, he uses the best descriptive words, the best adjectives he, could, he had in the English language to describe the glory of this final project that God is building this morning. As we gather here this morning, I'm, I'm thankful for the brethren who's turned out because you show an interest in this building project that God is building. And it shows that you yourself, you want to be, you want to be constructed and you want to be you want to be added to that building. And so this morning, we look for expectations yeah. then so that God is going to work in this body and he's going to, he's going to get us ready to be, yeah. be added to this building. And so that on that final day, and brethren, I suspect it won't be long, then we're going to be presented, you know, this marvelous picture we have in this. 
and much labor is going on and much work is going on right now because we're in the construction phase. Yes, but right now, you see, John has given us a look after the construction is over. So you can expect to be, you know, in the constru construction zone now. It can get kind of rough, you know, as it is in construction areas. So you just put your hard hat on, and, you know, and you just get ready, you know, to go to work. So this morning, that's what we're going to do. And so let's open up with the prayer. I'm going to turn it back over, Sister Tasha. Dear Heavenly Father.